Hello everyone, this is Deborah Richardson and today I am putting the AP in Happy where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. This podcast will give a voice to accounts payable team members by talking about the growing reality of cyber attacks in their world and which vendor setup and vendor management techniques they can apply to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Today's podcast episode is brought to you by the five day vendor master file cleanup. Do you trust the data in your vendor master file? Well, if you have less than 5,000 active vendor records and need to prepare for a vendor self-registration portal or for 1099 and 1042 IRS annual forms distribution, you are in luck. We have vendor validations, including watch list screening, duplicate vendor review, vendor inactivation recommendations, and more. Go to DebraRRichardson.com, that's D-E-B-R-A-R-R-I-C-H-A-R-D-S-O-N.com slash consulting, or email me at Debra, D-E-B-R-A, at Debra rrichardson.com for a quote today. Do you and or your team find yourselves at near year end with W9s to collect? I have a strategy that will get that W9 collected or protect your company from future payments without a W9. Keep listening. Welcome to episode 54, how to collect vendor W-9s before year end. The best practice is to collect the W-9 at the time of vendor setup, confirm that the legal name and tax ID matches IRS records, and then create the vendor in your vendor master file. Now this process, and I'm sure quite a few of you out there are doing it, it ensures that the vendor is real and that it is not a fraudulent vendor and it also alleviates this year in rush to collect W-9s. Collection and validation of W-9s also reduces the B-notice process that are a result of filing inaccurate legal name and tax ID combinations during 1099 distribution and filing uh, season which is coming up in January. So if the W-9s have either not been collected or if you performed a bulk 10 match as part of your process to get ready for that 1099 distribution and filing system and you found that some vendors did not pass um, that validation and you need to collect W-9s, You can use this strategy to be sure your vendors submit W-9s before year end or protect your company if they do not. So the first part of this strategy, and there are really three parts, um, the first part is to place payments on hold and request a W-9 be received by a specified date. So you wanna reach out to the vendor by phone, by email, or regular mail, and give the vendor a specified date, such as December 1st. Now I know this year, December 1st is a Sunday, but just saying December 1st, just to throw a date out there, to return their W-9. Now the date can also be based on the date of their next invoices um, when they are due to be paid. So for example, instead of using um, a December 1st date, maybe their next payment is due to go out on, I don't know, um, November 25th. And so you wanna then change that date to the 25th so that you can be able, you will be able to release their payments if they submit their invoice um, or their W-9 on time. And that also gives the vendor um, an incentive, right? Because their invoices are are due, an incentive to get that W-9 in so they 
they can get paid on time. And it also allows you the ability to keep the vendor happy by giving them a date that again allows them to get paid on time. Now, when you reach out to the vendor, be clear and let the vendor know that if the W-9 is not received by a specific date, any payments will be subject to the IRS backup withholding rate of currently it's 24% for all reportable payments. Now this is an additional incentive for the vendor to get their W-9 in by the specified date because now you will back up withhold 24% and vendors never like that, especially when you tie it to invoices that are due to be paid. So if they know that they have invoices that need to be paid by a specific date and if they don't submit the W-9 by that date, then you're going to reduce their payment by 24%. They are more likely to get that W-9 into you. In order for this to work, you do need to place a hold on the vendor record in your accounting system or ERP to ensure that no payments will be made. And each ERP or accounting system is different in how payments are blocked, but there should be a way to block the vendor for payments at the vendor record level without having to go into each invoice and block the invoices. And a great example is PeopleSoft. PeopleSoft would allow you to go into the location on the vendor record and place a payment hold on the vendor. Now I do want to acknowledge you may get some pushback once the vendor gets that um, telephone call, email, regular mail. You may get some pushback from them or from leadership or maybe from other stakeholders such as procurement if the vendor reached out to procurement. And if that's the case, then just move to the next step immediately. And that next step is when you do not receive the W-9 by the specified date or if you receive pushback, you wanna send the payment and back up withhold 24% and send it to the IRS. Now I know that that is a pain, but again, if the W-9 was not received by the specified date, it is time to back up withhold. And why do I say that it can be a pain? Well, that's because some accounting systems or ERPs do not have the ability to back up withhold systematically. If this is your system, that process to back up withhold, meaning deduct from the vendor 24% from their payments and send 24% to the IRS, then you're gonna have to do that manually. And that manual process can be done, and I have done that before when using an ERP that did not have this function. So what I did is I created an IRS vendor record using the address that the backup withholding payments need to be sent to. And that can be found in the IRS W-9 instructions. Then you wanna create and post both a credit and a debit memo because for the vendor, you wanna reduce the payment by 24%. And for the IRS, you wanna generate and post an amount due that is equal to 24% of the payment and the credit and debit memo will do that. So once that piece is done, you want to continue to back up withhold until the vendor submits a valid W-9. Once that W-9 is submitted, terminate the backup withholding and let the vendor know that any amounts withheld will need to be claimed to the IRS during their annual tax return process. I can't tell you how many times we had vendors that would come back and they wanted a refund of any amounts previously withheld and sent to the IRS. And I don't know if you've tried that before, but in my experience, if I've sent money um, on behalf of a vendor for backup withholding to the IRS, I've never been able to get that back. 
So it's best to just be upfront with the vendor and let them know that um, your company does not issue refunds, that they will have to include those amounts on their annual tax return. So I know some of you are wondering, well, what if I have a vendor and the vendor did not submit the W-9 originally or the vendor did not pass the bulk 10 match that we did as part of our 1099 process. And so what you do in this scenario really depends on two things. So one, you wanna look at whether or not that vendor has an open PO. If they have an open PO, then at some point they are going to submit an invoice because they are going to provide goods or services to your company to satisfy that PO. Once that's done, invoices will come in, the vendor will still be on hold and will not get paid, so the strategy will work. Slightly different for those vendors who do not have an open PO. So you don't know if your company is gonna use them in the future. And in this case, my recommendation is to inactivate the vendor record. Now, inactivating the vendor means that the vendor will go through the new vendor setup process and the W-9 should be collected as part of the new vendor setup process. And I actually have a podcast, um, episode 16, and you can check that out to hear why you should treat inactive vendors the same as new vendors. And I'll put a link to it in the show notes. But I want to point out, and I mentioned it at the start of the podcast, that this is the step that really protects your company. So you won't have that vendor available um, because it'll be inactivated or the vendor will be inactivated. So you won't have them available to have a PO created in the future or to post invoices against um, and have payments go out without a W-9 being collected. Now, this year we know that you've got some cleanup to do, but if you want to alleviate having to collect W-9s and really having your team validate W-9s in the future, why don't you enlist some help? I will leave a link in the show notes to W-9 Manager. And what W-9 Manager does is it automates your collection process. It enables the vendor to generate a valid and a complete W-9 and works with you once you receive it to manage and track your vendor's W-9s as well as manage W-9 forms centrally and help you determine 1099 responsibility. There is a discount code. You can use HAPPY19 to save 10%. And again, I will put that all of that in the show notes. So thanks everyone. I hope you enjoyed the 54th episode of the Putting the AP in Happy podcast, where accounts payable teams are empowered to protect the vendor master file from fraud. Don't forget to check the show notes for the links mentioned in the podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing and writing a review of my podcast on the platform that you use to listen. Stay happy.